It was no real surprise when William Daley entered the race for governor of Illinois three months ago. Daley had been White House Chief of Staff for President Obama, Commerce Secretary and President Clinton. He also comes from one of the state's leading political families. But this week, Daley has suddenly dropped his campaign to challenge Democratic Governor Pat Quinn. Bill Daly is with us this morning. Welcome. Thanks, Charlie. Now, here's what I don't understand. You yeah. say you weren't prepared for the enormity of it. A man who spent his life in politics, number one, and coming from the family you do, <laughs> Was it that or simply the idea of being a candidate? You didn't feel like you had the stuff of a I, candidate. I think it was a combination of things, to be honest with you, Charlie. Uh, I've been around politics my whole life. I enjoy it. I think it's important for people to get involved. But when you get actually in that arena and then you look at the depth of the problems which we have in our state, and you look at a long-term period of from five minimum to nine years if you're successful, that's a long time. And it's probably sometimes like there are hundreds or thousands of reporters around America today thinking they can come here and do this job, and it would be easy. <laughs> and try to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever time you get up, and they do wrong. Be wrong. And, and yeah. it really gets down to a personal decision as to whether yeah. this is what you want for the next number of years. But, Bill, when you look at the Chicago papers this morning, people think this can't be the real story. Is there a scandal that we don't know about? Are you in poor health? Is there something? <laughs> not that more? I know. <laughs> no, no, and I hope not, too. On, on but, both cases? On both cases. <laughs> on, on both cases. Exactly. But I, I wonder if you would take us how difficult was this decision and take us behind the scenes to reach this decision. Did you go meditate somewhere? Did you talk with your wife, with your yeah. brother? Was this tough for you to do? It was very tough. Over the last number of weeks, you know, you have a lot of sleepless nights. You sit there and wonder, is this really... Um, what you want to do. Uh, you may think and you may have a dream that you want to do something uh, in your life and then you really get into it and you say, is this really me? Uh, my wife and I uh, enjoy life greatly and she's a great partner and uh, my kids are great. I have three little granddaughters and you do face some of these questions in life and say, is this the best thing for you? Uh, it may be a dream you've had and you think you'd be pretty good at it and I know I would have been, but at, at some point uh, it was a tough decision but I believe it was the right decision for myself and, and in the long run, the right decision for the people of Illinois, and that's what it's about. You served in the White House as President Obama's chief of staff. I want to get your take on a couple of issues on Syria. We heard the past two defense secretaries that served President Obama, Secretary Gates and Secretary Panetta, said last night it was wrong for the president to seek approval from Congress to strike Syria. Do you agree with them? I, I don't agree with that. I think that we, we, it is too easy to go to war. We've proven that all over the last number of years. I think the American people have to understand that not only a sliver of America who are in the military sacrifice, but all Americans do, and the elected officials should be forced to stand up and make a decision. I believe the president was right in wanting to go into Syria. I think the, and the Congress should have backed him. Yes, we are war weary, but we've got to draw a line somewhere. But Leon Panetta said to me that even if he does not get congressional authority, he should go ahead and, and order an airstrike, assuming the compromise doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I believe the Congress, and especially when the Congress was probably going to punt the ball and not, right. and not make a decision, I think the president was right and he said it. I have the authority to do this. And I remember when we went into Libya. But, but why go to the Congress if you're not going to pay any attention to what they be, say? Be, it's, it's not that you're not going to pay attention to them. I think the American people have got to see their legislators, their representatives, stand up and be part of a decision making. But, but I, I believe the president has the authority to do what he was going to to do, but I think for our democracy and for people's engagement, especially when you're going to war, even though it may have been mm -hmm. limited, it's the right thing to do. Let's talk about gun control. Yeah. The president was not able to get it passed even after Sandy Hook, and now with this mm -hmm. latest shooting in the D.C. Navy Yard, is there anything more he should or can be doing on this? I think uh, until the American people stand up and say enough of this, the truth of the matter is, you know, I, come, I, I spend time in the banking business. A lot of politicians like to beat up the bankers. This is big business gun industry. This is not about only about rights of people. Sure, there's a Second Amendment. This is a big business, multiple billions of dollars. That's what this is about. They're protecting an industry. They're protecting uh, big profits. And that's what it's about. And until the American people see that and elected officials see that, we won't get sensible gun laws. And that's a disgrace. And this is more important trying. than human lives? To many people, money is more important than human lives, and that's what the disgrace of this thing is. Bill, right. there is a, a new book out by Richard Wolf um, about the Obama White House that quotes some aides as calling you a walking disaster when you were chief of staff. Do you care to respond? No, I thought probably some of them were walking disasters themselves. Yeah. 
Okay. But I won't name them. But okay. did you find some animosity when you got to the White House in terms Not of animosity. people who resisted you being there? Look, there's always a um, uh, question when a new chief of staff comes in. Is he our person? They've had relationships with others. There was somebody else they wanted to, to get that job who didn't get that job, and there's disappointment, and therefore there's the usual sort of politics internal that goes on. Not only the White House, I'm sure at CBS it happens when somebody comes in and takes no. a chair here. It doesn't so, happen here. No, 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 it doesn't happen here. No, no, I mean, I, I, I Stop talking crazy, here. man. That doesn't happen here. We'll be so, looking forward so, to your next chapter. Okay, good. Okay. Right. Thanks, Bill. Thank Great you. to see you. Thank you very much for coming.